Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections, Aiden's Path. So, last place we left off, uh, we were just trying to go to sleep and we were getting messaged, I believe. And I wanted to let you guys know next week is going to be a little bit busy for me. I'm going to try and keep up. Uh, I'm going to try and have, you know, uh, one upload six days of the week. So, you know. Yeah, hopefully next week it'll, it'll uh, be a little bit calmer for me so I can make more videos for you guys. But anyway, let's jump right back into it, shall we? <clears throat> Alrighty. The cafe was surprisingly nice, and Elliot was very sweet. I'm not sure how I felt about his flirting, though. I'm even less sure if he was being serious or if he was just teasing me. I need to get these random thoughts out of my head and get to sleep. There'll be plenty of time to think about boys in school tomorrow. Day two. Just five more minutes, Mom. Mm. It was futile. The moment my phone began going, it was futile. The moment my phone began going off. As much as I want to return to the wondrous dreamland I was in before, the accursed sounds from my phone forced me into this horrible and groggy reality. The disappointment I feel is insurmountable when I see that it's just Zoe texting me a reminder that I'm supposed to meet her at the cafe today. Considering that it's still a few hours away, I really think I could have done without the reminder. My alarm isn't set to go off for another hour, too. Unfortunately, I'm awake now. My head is buzzing with enough activity that I, know I won't be falling back to sleep. I guess I should be thankful she sent a text instead of letting herself into my room to remind me. Not that I was likely to forget. I've got another class this evening, but I didn't have any plans beyond that. With a few more hours to kill, I guess I've got time to do something before I go meet with Zoe. I could check out the gym. It might be worthwhile seeing what they have in case I find the motivation to exercise. Plus, there's bound to be some kind of eye candy. Oh, don't worry, we got that in the other playthrough. I could also just head to the cafe early. I could probably sneak in a conversation with Elliot while also getting a dose of caffeine in my veins to wake me up. Although, I could also be less proactive and just stay in my room and play on my phone for a couple hours. I might even be able to sneak in some more sleep if I try hard enough. Yeah, let's go to the dorms. It was only inevitable. Going out and doing things can be a chore sometimes, and today I really just feel like being as lazy as po Wait, hold up. Cafe. Uh, okay, let's see what the dorm does. I run a serious risk of leaving my. I run a serious risk by leaving my room anyway. I might run into somebody and be forced to interact with them. And after yesterday, I'm trying not to pile up my forced social interactions. Nope. Better to stay inside and troll on the internet, looking up memes and pop culture references. I have a lot of worthless social media to still catch up on as well. Like did it. Like did Asher Hamworthy really? Like did Asher Hamworthy really start a vegan diet? The rest of my morning is spent scrolling through meaningless celebrity media feeds and random pseudo-news articles until it is time for me to head out to the cafe. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and head to the cafe. Thinking about it, I didn't get to talk there with Elliot much. Plus, the coffee is pretty good. What the hell? Nothing wrong with going there a little early. As I move towards the door, my hand reaches out towards my jacket, but then I recall how, how hot it was yesterday. I'm probably better off without it. I made the walk to the cafe quick. As it turned out, there was a chilly breeze today, so the less time I spent outside, the better. I probably should have taken my jacket, although it wouldn't be so bad if the cafe wasn't closed. I didn't think it would be closed, but maybe that's what I get for not checking their hours of operation first. The hot cup. Really, guys. I feel another cold breeze blow by me. A chill creeps up my spine. Should I just leave and come back later? Mason? I turn to the sound of the voice to see a familiar cat standing before me. In this one moment, he's my knight on a white horse with the key to a warmer salvation. I uh, was hoping to get some coffee. I didn't realize you weren't open yet. Hmm, is that all you were here for? He, sound, he sends a strange glance my way before reaching into his pocket to pull out a small key. The panther then slides past me towards the door, his tail brushing against me as he passes. The large cat fumbles with the lock and while I stand beside him and watch. Now that I'm this close to him, though, I realize he smells sweet, like honey and maple. There we go! 
The door swings open and Elliot moves into the cafe, motioning for me to follow. Hmm. Thankfully, the inside of the cafe is much warmer than the outside. So, what can I get for you? I'll be getting muffins and donuts started, and I can make you almost anything to drink. I'm not really sure. Whatever's sweetest, I suppose. Alright, I'll have that in a jiffy. Elliot heads behind the counter and into the back. I hear a lot of chatter of I hear a lot of clattering of metal before he returns to the front, apron in hand. He grabs a small cup off the shelf and flips a switch on the top of the one, one of the coffee makers. The smell of cocoa quickly fills the air, accompanied by the soft whirring of the machinery. Elliot looks at me while he makes my cup, his eyes never averting from my own gaze. Don't you need to look at what you're doing? Heh, <laughs> no, I've gotten pretty good at this. After a few years, it becomes muscle memory. Plus, I've got something I'd rather be looking at. There he goes flirting again. Is he actually trying to start something with me, or is he just teasing? Here you go, on the house. Elliot slides a small cup on the table, the smell of which forms a harmony of cocoa and caramel. At the top is a thin layer of foam forming the shape of a heart. I have to get back to the oven. Be sure to let me know how you like it. The Jelly Panther moves back into the kitchen area, leaving me alone in the front. I grab a seat off to the side while more customers begin to come in for their morning caffeine fix. Eventually, he's joined by a lengthy squirrel girl with a chipper attitude. She takes orders and gets them ready quickly with a big grin on her face. Elliot and his energetic work Elliot and his energetic worker more moves swiftly throughout the station. It almost looks like it almost looks chaotic between the two of them, yet not a single spill occurs and neither one of them bumps into one another. Elliot must have noticed that I was watching him because every now and then he glances over at me with his playful look in his eye. It's Zoe. I guess she knows what I guess she wants to know when when I'll get here. I text a quick response, letting her know I'm already here and sitting near the front. It looks like she's typing up a response, but then she stops. She's about to barge in. I guess she'll be here in a little bit. I wasn't wrong. After a minute of waiting, the red panda did, in fact, arrive. She busts into the cafe and runs straight for my table, panting, panting and out of breath. Whoa, Zoe, I know I got here earlier, but you need to run. <sighs> Maybe not. I didn't just want to keep you waiting. You've uh, already got a cup. So does that mean you already spoke with Elliot? Yeah, why? Did he say anything strange? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I think he tried... I mean, I think he tried flirting with me, though. I'm not really... Though I'm not really sure if he's gay or available. Damn it! Zoe slaps her hand into her face. She drags it down in an almost comedic manner, as if I told her something truly terrible. Just once, I'd like to have a guy friend that man doesn't feel the urge to flirt with. So, he really does flirt with everyone. No, not everyone, but definitely majority of guys I've ever, ever introduced him to. I'm sorry if he made you uncomfortable. Well, don't tell him that. He might take it as an invitation. That doesn't sound too bad to me, honestly, though I'm curious why Zoe thinks, seems to think of it as such a bad thing. Anyway, the others already came in through the back, so let's move tables. Others? With that explanation, Zoe grabs my hand and drags me around the corner towards a table in the back of the cafe. I see some familiar faces seated at the table. Before I can even inquire, Zoe places her hands on my shoulders and sits me down. Uh-oh. Okay, everybody, this is Mason, the guy I was telling you all about. Mason, these are my friends who I wanted you to meet. To the left of you is Aiden, as you already know. It's good to see you again, Mason. Although, I'm sure Zoe could probably have found a way to do this that was less uncomfortable. What is it that we're doing, exactly? Well, it... Hey, don't go stealing my bit, Aiden. The wolf slides back into his chair with a grumble. Hey there, stranger. Fancy seeing you here. Have you two met already? We sat next to each other in my English class. I don't know how I didn't realize you're... that your mason was the same as my precious seat buddy. Right. Well, whatever. Next to our favorite bunny boy is Jude. Is Jude our brooding hunk of... That's enough, Zoe. Just get on with it. Jude sends a somewhat icy stare across the table as if silently judging me. His hand is slightly clenched while his fingers rub together. Why does he look like he wants to kill me right now? Yeah, that's Jude. Don't worry too much. He glares at everybody like that. 
I do not. Hey guys, I hope I didn't miss too much of the fun. Elliot pops up seemingly out of nowhere with everyone's drink orders just in time to interrupt the increasingly tense moment. You didn't, Elliot, though I know I'm a bit late with it, but I hope you're being completely respectful to Mason. You know, if you keep making comments like that, people are going to think I'm some kind of deviant. Well, maybe you are if you actually flirt with any guy with a pulse. It's a tough market out there, Zoe. You've got to be active these days, especially at my age. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but do you mind if I ask what this is all about? The two stop arguing and look at me. Elliot rubs the back of his head while Zoe just kind of shuffles her feet for a moment. Her face scrunched up as if trying to think of what to say. Aiden looks around the room before giving her a nod. Okay, so I called you here because I was hoping you'd be willing to join our club. Like, one of the university extracurriculars? Sort of, more like a... support group? She stares at me as if waiting to see if I'm acknowledging what she's saying so far. A support group for what, like college stress? No, more for... Y hmm. Thought I heard something. Anyway. No, more for unique dispositions. Zoe's just getting more on edge. It's probably better you just stop beating around the bush. Right, right. Okay, so Aiden, Quinn, Jude, Elliot, and I are all psychics. What did she just say? She's joking, right? She has to be. No sane person would say that with a serious face if they weren't joking. Right, and I'm a celebrity that's moved from the hills to live a quiet, normal life. I'm telling you the truth. The only reason I'm telling you this is that I was hoping you'd be willing to join us because of your own psychic abilities. All right, never mind. They're all crazy. Holy crap, is this seriously another cult trying to recruit me? He doesn't believe you, Zoe. What, you trying to be a mind reader or something? Not exactly. Aiden's an empath. He can feel your emotions radiating off of you. He knows whether you're comfortable, scared, or even hungry. You mean he feels your emotions and applies his own psychic bullshit interpretations? Psych bullshit information, okay. Do you really want to start another altercation with me right now, Jude? Stag looks like he's about to fling the whole table, his hands clenching as he grasps the edge firmly. Thankfully, Quinn places a small hand on his shoulder and his grip loosens. No, I won't be doing that anymore. I really wish you two could at least try to get along. You're actually serious, aren't you? You actually believe that you are all psychics. This is crazy, and you're all nuts if you think I'm going to buy this. I'm leaving. I move to stand up, but find myself stopped by a soft hand placed over mine. Listen, Mason, I know it's probably a lot right now. Oh, yeah? What are you, reading my emotions too? Quinn has premonitions of the future, actually. That's why I decided to sit next to you in that boring English class. I knew we'd be seeing, I knew we'd be seeing more of each other, so I thought I'd use the chance to get to know you better. Hypothetically, if this guy can see the future, it would at least explain why he was acting so friendly with me. Or, Zoe told him about me, which is why he sat next to me. That would be a more likely explanation. The problem is, I'm still not sure what their angle is here. Maybe I should keep playing for along for now. It's a bit unnerving to think that most of the people I've met over the past couple of days are literally insane. But at this point, my curiosity has at least peaked. Okay, so what about the big guy over here? Jude has acute precognition. He always knows what's going to happen. Isn't that the same as... It's not the same. Quinn has visions of random things while I see things constantly. It might be easier to say Jude has really good reflexes. It's not reflexes, it's... I know, I know. Ignoring how crazy this all sounds, there's something consistent with all of these psychic powers. You know, so far each of these powers has been unprovable. You're just saying this and expecting me to just believe you? True, most of our powers can't be proven, though if you need proof, that's where Elliot comes in. Large Panther steps forward. He looks to Zoe, who nods back at him. Taking a glance around the room, Elliot lets his eyes fall into the coffee cup he put in front of me. His eyes bore into the cup, like he's watching a pot boil. Nothing's happening... 
The cup slides across the table gently, without anyone touching it. Then, it lifts ever so slightly off the table in front of me before gently returning to its original position. How did you do that? Elliot can perform telekinesis. You know, moving objects with his mind. Holy shit, this is legit. Like how that rhymes. They're actually all psychics. Am I going crazy? No, 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 no. This has got to be a dream, right? I reached my hand underneath the table, hoping to find some sort of magnet or elaborate device to explain what I just saw. It said all I fear are the bolts attaching the base of the table to the top. How am I even supposed to process this? Zoe said earlier that she wanted me to join this group because she also thought I might be psychic, didn't she? Nope. Thank you, Alarm Chan. I shall be nicer to you for now. <laughs> Done three videos today. Oh, plenty of content for my lovely viewers. Anyway, guys, this has been another episode of Aiden's Path and Psychic Connections. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!